everybody. Welcome back. I hope everybody is staying safe, staying healthy during this COVID-19 situation. I hope it's not easy. It's not easy for everybody. The way everything got to go. But anyway, this is one of the things I've uh, decided to do to keep myself occupied. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll pick up some tips and uh, be able to uh, work on your own projects. For the last time you've seen me uh, with all the instructions on how to uh, lay out for a sign crafter and make a sign and the one I made was uh, Hunter's Room Minecraft with all of the Minecraft, some of the Minecraft tools on it. So this time this lovely piece of uh, old table that I got here what we're actually going to be or what I'm going to actually be doing is uh, this was uh, belonged to a, a friend of mine who's uh, basically a repeat client he gets me to do projects for it every now and again and some custom pieces for him and this is uh, apparently this is a 50 or 80 year old table that uh, his grandfather built I got that right I think it's your grandfather and uh, well it's weathered the storm over the years uh, the table been taken off the top and there was a Canadian sign made out of it so he asked me to try to use utilize the stretchers and the legs in some other kind of project a piece that he can uh, keep for himself and uh, give his mom also. So he asked me to see if I can make picture frames from it. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Now, I am going to be also using the legs. I haven't decided on uh, what I'm going to use them for yet. But uh, I'm going to be making two picture frames out of the stretchers. So I'm going to have to cut them clear. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I have to cut them clear. Now, it's going to be staying with the patina look that's on it. The paint is staying on it. The gray is staying on it. There's, I'm not going to be uh, doing nothing with the uh, with the original look of this. The only difference is, I will, I will be cutting these stretchers in half. That way, I can get enough material for two picture frames. And the plan is two picture frames. Um, 11 by uh, 11 by 17 I got uh, everything marked down here what I need I done all my measurements first figured out how I'm going to be making it so that's what I've done and it's going to be two picture frames like I said 11 by 17 I'm going to be biscuit joining together the miters there's not going to be no nails or nothing used in this I got uh, number 10 biscuits, no biscuit joiner. I got uh, these uh, uh, clamps, they're uh, strap clamps for putting together square boxes and stuff like that where sometimes it's hard to use regular clamps. And then I also got uh, this, I also got this piece of plexiglass here and that's what I'm going to be utilizing for the glass that way then if the pictures ever falls down anytime at least the glass won't break that's what I decided to use anyway so yeah so he's a friend of mine Mike and I'm gonna see what I can do if he figures that uh, this would have been a project that uh, I would have enjoyed taking on for him because he know that uh, I like to well I like to recondition old stuff or uh, restore as maybe you've seen in one of my uh, one of my clips restoring a 50 year old child's rocking chair I basically took all that apart I had to turn a couple of spindles because a couple of them were broke so but anyway that's what we're going to be doing today we're going to be turning this table into picture frames so I'm going to be taking the oscillating saw 
So I'll move some of this out of my way right now. And we're going to cut these clear. So when it was built years ago, it was built pretty good. edges, straighten them up. And it tells you how old this is because it's put together with square nails. And all of this is going to stay just like it is.
sometimes it's hard to figure out exactly what you want to build out of something. But this is what Mike wanted, which makes it a little bit easier. Then you don't have to do all the figuring out what you want. You just got to figure out your measurements and everything. So that's our four structures from the table. saw and we're going to square up the edges on that first before we start anything else always remember your safety glasses no one understand your power tools if you don't give them respect they will bite you as little as possible because for what I'm doing I need the full amount of wood for the size of picture frames that I'm going to be making. that it is the only thing different I'm going to be putting clear coat over it so that uh, the old patina stays now we're going to be going to the table saw next we got to rip that down to two inches So that there is four and three quarters. I want to get nice edges. So we're going to be doing it two inches. And that way then I know I'll get up because we got a level for the thickness of the saw blade, which is the, what's called the kerf. And uh, that way then we'll have, uh, we know we'll have enough. two inches wide when you miter them together because even though the picture frame is going to be for 11 by 17 <coughs> we need outside measurements because of the two inches we needed 15 and 21 so that's why we're going with uh, two inches because this stretcher here it's 15 and a quarter, and that's going to give us just enough room to make our miters. So now, when I do this on the table saw, actually I'm going to be running because I want to keep the original edges, but we're going to have a cut in the middle. Now, that cut in the middle is going to give us a look like this. 
but I got a way to mimic this here. So I'll be showing you the steps of that, but I can't show you the exact product I use because uh, I'm in the middle of trying to get a patent. Now, just making sure that there's uh, when I go to run it against the fence of the table saw. There's nothing going to stop it from moving. And I'm just checking it just to make sure. back down when I'm finished just to make sure that nothing can happen. So now as you see we have four pieces of each and again now we have 
four at 15 and a quarter, and four at 29. So now we'll get our four pieces at 15 inches and four pieces at 21 inches right here. So now we're gonna go to the miter saw now and start doing that. Now, this here is gonna be the outside edge. The original patina is gonna be the outside edge of the frame. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm gonna to have to dado in here for the glass to fit down into. So I'm gonna be doing that in here. Then I only got a small edge to do the patina on. And it won't be so noticeable as if it was the big side out here. So again, when you're gonna do this now, the original patina of going against the fence of the miter saw. And we're going to go on a 45 degree and we got to go to the very point of that wood. Now this time I can put, because this is the long point, we're coming in on the miter that way, so I can still leave the saw on this angle, 45 this way, but now I gotta put the rip side in against the fence. same steps again. taking very much off here because this piece is only 15 and a quarter so I only got a quarter inch clearance to play with.
see what I'm doing, but when I cuts this one and flips it over and marks it, when I goes to cut this side, I starts away from my line, gradually leaving a little mark with the blade of the saw, gradually moving the piece in until I hit the line where I exactly want it. So now that's the four pieces cut at 15. Now I need four at 21. And this here where it's 29, it gives me a lot more extra to work. <laughs> tight to the fence and down tight just to make sure that once you make contact with the saw if it's not down tight it will go flying you don't want that here but then I put a little line down right here because when you go to make the cut the blade is going to be coming down straight here so you want to just make sure because this from this from that point to that line is where you want to be frames. Now what we got to do is uh, we're going to set up and I'll show you how to date them. Now I'm going to date them down three eighths of an inch and back three eighths of an inch. So that's now I got to set up the saw for. use 
dado blades too, but if you don't have dado blades, I'm going to show you how this can be done with just one regular blade. Now what you got to do from the fence to the outside of the blade, so your blade is here, your fence is here, so you got to measure from the fence to the outside of the blade to do what we're going to do here. this is going to work good this here is 3 8 so now I'm going to put that there on the table saw and I'm going to lower the blade to that height so I'm just going to run this on top of that and get it down until it just clears the blade there we go so now we're 3 8 deep so now we're going to run it this here the cut edge is going to ride against the fence. So now we're measured for 3 8 exactly. So that's going to put a line out through here. most rustic side out that's why I put the dado line on this side so depending on what side you want showing out that's going to depend on where you put your dado for your glass
I'm just trying to size up. Yeah, okay. So now we should not have to move the blade or the fence rather because it's at 3 8 and 3 8. So now I'm just going to take this now up on its edge and I'm going to ride it through and that's going to give that's going to take out that'll take out this 3 8 that'll take out this 3 8 of an inch corner. Saw, you gotta put this side that you've done the dado in, and again the fence. 